So Kat, the opportunity to judge some wines from Armenia. What, what's your overall sense of what you were tasting? So this is my first kind of real experience of tasting Armenian wine and it was great to have so many samples submitted. It gave what I felt was a reasonably good view across the industry. My main perceptions, however, was that actually as a whole, the industry does need to make some strides in terms of quality to really bring themselves up to a bit more of an international level. So we only awarded, I think it was two silvers, a handful of bronzes, and the rest, unfortunately, of the entries got no medals. And that really was a combination of some hygiene practices in the winery which need to be improved. We found quite a lot of wines with brett, with sort of volatile acidity, so some challenges there in terms of cleanliness and sort of those hygiene practices. And then on the other end of the spectrum as well, there were definitely some challenges around oxygen management. So a lot of the wines that didn't win medals had actually had too much oxygen exposure and they were therefore oxidised and cidery, or they actually didn't have enough exposure to oxygen and were very reductive. So I think there sort of needs to be some fine tuning there in terms of how winemakers are approaching oxygen management within a winery. And were they to you know, address those issues, as you suggest, and, and this is the point, of course, of, of entering wines in an international competition, to have people assess the wines in that way, um, what's the prize? You know, what are the opportunities, potentially, for Armenia? Yeah, I think there is certainly opportunity there. At the moment, I would see that being very much focused on Rennie as a great variety. It's great that it's easily pronounceable mm. for an English speaker, so mm. that's fantastic news. As a style, the better quality wines that we tasted were very bright, they were very fruity, very much on a kind of a, a pleasing sour cherry note, lots of fresh acidity. So they were very drinkable and actually very approachable. And um, for a UK consumer, I think that would be, you know, certainly at the moment, the wines which would be more acceptable and much more interesting for people to discover. In terms of the whites and the rosés that we tasted, there was no particular grape variety that stood out in terms of its kind of quality potential. I would say as a whole, it did feel as though whites and rosés had probably been harvested too early to preserve the acidity, which absolutely you need to do in terms of those styles of wine. But that just did mean that the wines were a little bit unripe, so we were getting some quite tart fruit flavours, and certainly in the whites, some kind of slightly green and underripe notes. So I think it's just about finding, again, that balance, that really fine balance between ripeness and kind of fruit weight, but being able to preserve that acidity so that you have something that's really um, lush and drinkable. So the work is there to do, but the opportunities are there as well. Absolutely.